him. I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Come on, God, it's the only news that matters. In a new interview, Don Dawkins appeared willing to blame Metallica for Dawkins' temporary 1989 breakup that resulted from tension between the namesake lead singer and Dawkins guitarist George Lynch. But other reasons have been cited for these early Dawkins lineups issues before. Still, on Battleline Podcast this week, Don suggested Metallica was kind of maybe the reason we broke up. After Dokken toured with Metallica as part of his 1988 Monsters of Rock package, he mainly blamed Metallica because they were showing uh, Dokken every night. They were, they were owning them, you know? And um, Don said it was a tough tour. said because they hadn't done the Black Album yet. Metallica is now the biggest band in the world. And that was kind of maybe the reason we broke up, because of Metallica. Because when we played the stadium tour, Metallica came on stage every day with this attitude like do or die. They just gave it 100%, 110%. They were kicking ass. They were just coming out with Injustice For All, which was not my favorite Metallica album. And they hadn't done the Black Album yet. That's now taking them into superstardom. I would talk to the band. I'd say, look at Metallica. And they're opening for us. And we had the same manager. And I used to say to the manager, hey, I know they're opening and they're only making half the money as us. But could you put them on after us? Because when Metallica went on, they closed the show with whatever it was, Kill Em All or something like that. And we're coming on stage doing In My Dreams and we look like the monkeys. Practically because we're just a straight ahead rock and roll band. However, Don says he respected Metallica so much because we'd be in Texas and it'd be 105 degrees and they go on at three o'clock and it's just sweltering hot. But they went on every day. Metallica had this mindset that if this is our last show, we die, so be it. They gave it 110%. In the past, the Dawkins singer claimed that Lynch's excessive drug use was the reason for the split. Lynch had previously pointed to disagreement over Dawkins' financial agreements as the reason for the breakup. Yeah, I don't know if um, Metallica had anything to do with it because, I mean, they might have, but as I understand, I might be wrong, but as I understand, before they did the Monsters of Rock tour, they were already going to break up. They were about to break up anyway. So I don't, you know, if that's true, if it happened before Monsters of Rock, if it happened after they were doing Monsters of Rock and they decided to break up, then... That would be understandable because I saw the Monsters of Rock tour in the Orange Bowl. And I'm a big Dokken fan, but they were horrible that day. They just didn't even try. And Metallica came on before them and just pulverized every band on the bill. Scorpions were great, though. But Metallica was better. Metallica was hungry. Metallica was the new thing. Everybody started to get into Metallica at this point. And they had, like, the... I don't know, as far as I can remember, see, being that I've been a big rock fan since, like, late 70s, I have never seen a band up to that point get so much hype like Metallica did. Because they were, you know, an opening act. You know, a lot of bands before that got all the hype when they became big. Metallica was growing. They were getting big. I think they just had, like, a gold album at the time, but it was a fanatical fan base that I was part of and all my friends back in the 80s, nobody hated Metallica. Everybody loved Lars the most. 
how times have changed, right? But they were, when I saw it, I don't recall Injustice for All coming out during the Monster Rock tour, but I know when I saw the tour, it wasn't out yet. And they did play uh, Harvester of Sorrow that day. And it was just like, God, man, Metallica is the greatest thing ever. At that time, there was nobody mightier than Metallica in the late 80s. I guarantee you that if Metallica was not on that bill, it wouldn't have done that well. Vangina was a, uh, an arena act, and so were the Scorps. And Dokken was weird, man, how they were never really an arena act. Yet they were pretty popular. They were all over MTV. And those three albums did very well. But, you know, I mean, I don't know if they went platinum, if all of them did. I know uh, one or two went gold. But, man, Triumph back in the day would headline arenas on just gold albums. I think they had just one platinum. And the same thing for Dokken. I think Dokken sold as many records in the 80s. But for some reason... They were never really headliners. I've always seen them opening back in the 80s, except for one time they played a show in a little club, and it was a one-off show or something uh, at the Button South. They played on the under lock and key tour. When I went to that show, that show was beyond packed. Beyond packed. You know, it was sold out. A lot of people didn't get in. I luckily got into that show, and it was awesome. That was the first time I saw... Doc and Headline. At least I saw Doc and Headline once in the 80s because I'm a big Doc and fan. Yes, I'm not really that much into uh, Breaking the Chains except for two, two or three songs. But I love Tooth and Nail, Under Lock and Key, and Back for the Attack. I love all three of those albums. I'm a big Doc and fan, and if they were headlining arenas, I'd go. But yeah, it's weird how they didn't, never really uh, became an arena act. Back then, at least in America. I know in Japan, they were huge. They were playing big places. Where I did see Doc in, in big places in the 80s, but they were opening. I saw them, first time I saw Doc in was Twisted Sister, Y&T, and Doc in it. And that was Tooth and Nail Tour. And they came back on the Tooth and Nail Tour, opening for Dio in a big arena. And then I saw Under Lock and Key with Judas Priest. And, as I said earlier, a headline set. And then I only saw Back for the Attack on the Monster of the Rock Tour, which was horrible. It was just a bad, bad show. And I have never seen that lineup of Dokken ever since. You know, I know they've reunited a few times, dysfunctional and stuff like that. But no, they didn't come down here for that or I would have went. But man, that album they did with Red Beach is amazing. Erase the Slate. Is one of it's it's my second favorite Dokken album. That's how much I love that album, and I think it's better than Under Lock and Key and Back to the Attack. Not better than Tooth and Nail. That would be my favorite. So what do you all think out there, huh? What do you think of Dokken? What do you think of Metallica? What do you think of the situation? Do you believe Don? I don't know if I got my facts straight or not. That if they did, because uh, I remember reading. Before they went out on the Monsters of Rock tour, they're already planning to break up. So, anybody have information? Because I could have sworn I read that or I heard that somewhere. Not during the Monsters of Rock show. That's odd. Leave your comments below if you know more than I do. And uh, thank you so much for watching The Only News That Matters. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And like the video. It's good for the YouTube Ignorisms. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Well, and do to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell, and do you ladies of Spain. Before we get canceled, check out the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast with me and Wadzilla. We are the Podcast Kings. Link to the podcast is in the description below, and also a link to the YouTube page. Check out all their episodes with visuals. And very soon, either Ian and I will learn how to go on YouTube Live. Might be soon. So check out the greatest podcast ever, according to science.com. It's also God's favorite podcast and Satan's favorite podcast as well. 
So check out the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast before we get canceled.